الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اللهم صل وسلم على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد in the name of Allah the most merciful the all giver I ask Allah the most high to send peace and salutations up on his Prophet Muhammad and whoever followed for Prophet Muhammad in good deeds until the day of resurrection. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now this is our follow-up sitting regarding the topic of the rights of the man and the woman in a marriage. Now in our previous sittings, we elaborated on the importance of the mannerism, the good mannerism that one should have towards his spouse from the man's side and some points from the woman's side. Now, in this sitting, we're going to continue in this field of rights of the two partners. And we're going to mention a few references, hadith, Quranic ayats that speaks about the importance of each right. Now let's move on. In today's sitting, we're going to start with a hadith of the Prophet It was narrated by Aisha, عنها, the mother of the believer. May Allah be pleased with her that the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be, upon Prophet Muhammad used to pray sitting down. He would recite the Quran when he was sitting down. Then when there were 30 or 40 ayats left, he would stand up and recite recite them. Then he, he would do ruku'ah. Then sujood. Then he would do likewise in the second raka'ah. When he had finished his prayer, he would look, and if I was awake, he would talk with me, and if I was asleep, he would lie down. This is narrated by Al-Bukhari. Now, let's look at points of this hadith. Remember, brothers and sisters, whenever there's a sitting, let's try to have a good understanding of what the Prophet ﷺ has said and what he has done. May peace and blessings be upon him. Now in this hadith, we have seen various points that are important to us throughout our lifestyle, especially in Salah. Now in this hadith, we can see that the Prophet ﷺ sometimes sat while he would recite the Quran. Yes. And when we when he had 30 or 40 ayats left, he would stand and co continue. Then he would do ruku'ah. So we can see that it's permissible for us to pray what sunnan in the night while sitting. Also, it's clear that the Prophet will pr would pray some of his salat at home next to his wife Aisha radiallahu and there is a hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that speaks about the importance of praying the compulsory salah in the masjid and the voluntary salats at home another point that has been made within this hadith is the is the state of the Prophet where he would talk to Aisha if she was awake, عنها. and then if she was asleep, he would leave her and then lie down. Now, when we read or take any hadith of the Prophet, وسلم, we have to be conscious. We have to ask ourselves, 
how can this help my Iman improve? And how can I raise it? Of course, by implementation. And what? Giving yourself or making yourself account to what you have learnt. In our previous settings, I hope, I strongly hope that you have implemented or you have tried your best to implement the hadith that we have spoken about regarding the importance of the rights of both partners. And I hope we are trying to implement good mannerism amongst her spouse. And this is a two-sided thing. No pressure should only be placed on the man's side or the woman. They should act together. Now let's move on to another point. Now let's move on. Not harming one's wife. Of course, this is from the man's side. He should not harm his wife. This is one of the basic principles of Islam because harming others is haram in the case of a stranger. It is even more so in the case of harming one's wife. La daran wa la dirar, the Prophet said. It was narrated from Ubaidah bin al Samit that the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, ruled there should be no harming nor reciprocating harm. Basically, you should not be harmed, you should not harm others, or you should not be, or you should not be harmed. It's two ways. There are two ways to this. This hadith was classed as Sahih by Imam Ahmed and other scholars. Amongst the things to which the lawgiver drew attention in this matter is the prohi prohibition of hitting or beating in a severe manner. It was narrated from Jabir that the Messenger of Allah, may peace and blessings be upon him, said in his farewell sermon, Fear Allah, the Most High, concerning women. Verily you have taken them in the security of Allah, the Most High, and intercourse with them has been made lawful unto you by the words of Allah. The most high you too have rights over them and that they should not allow anyone to sit on your bed that is not to let them in the house whom you do not like but if they do that you can chastise them but not severely their rights upon you are that you should provide them with food and clothing in a fitting manner. And this is from Imam Muslim, the book of Muslim. Secondly, the husband writes over his wife. The rights of the husband over his wife are amongst the greatest rights. Indeed, his rights over her are greater than her rights over him. Why? Because Allah as the most, as Zawajal said in the interpretation of the meaning, and they, women, have rights over their husband as regards living expenses, similar to those of the husband over them as regards obedience and respect, to which is responsible, to which is reasonable. But men have a degree of responsibility over them. Al-Baqarah. Al Jassa said, Allah tells us in his ayah that each of the spouses has rights over the others, and that the husband has one particular right over his wife which she does not have over him. I Ibn al Arabi said, This text states that he has some preference over her with regards to the right and duties of marriage. These rights include the obligation of obedience. The obligation of obedience. So the wife has to be obedient to her husband. Of course, obedience to what Allah has allowed. But things that Allah has made impermissible for 
for one to do, the wife should not obey. There's a state, there's a statement among the scholars that no one should obey a creation in disobeying the creator. Let's move on. Allah has made the man a awam, protector and many many uh, maintainer of the woman by commanding, directing and taking care of her, just as guardians take care of their charges. By virtues of physical, the physical and mental, mental, mental faculties that Allah the Most High has given over the woman and financial obligation that he has enjoined upon them. Allah says the Most High in the interpretation of the meaning, men are the protectors and maintainers of the woman. Of the woman, of woman, because Allah has made one of them to excel the other. And because they spend to support them from means. And this is in Surah An-Nisa. Now, we have gone through many proofs from the Quran and the Sunnah that speaks about the importance. Brothers and sisters, we should try our utmost best to implement how do we want our lives to be better in the sight of Allah? How do we want barakah, blessings to be in our lives? How do we want to get more rewards from the Most High? It's by implementation. Amen. So we have to work hard. We have to say what we preach and do. So we say and we implement the proofs and the adits that have come to our knowledge in order for us not to be from the ones that have disobeyed Allah the Most High and His Prophet So we should work hard, be conscious. We're here just for a short time. Be aware that your Lord knows everything. He knows your heart, He knows your actions, and He knows when you will die. You don't know. So you always have to be prepared for your returning to your Lord, the Most High, Allah Azawajal. So keep this in mind. Kindly tune in for an next setting regarding marriage, the rights of the man and the woman in this Islamic bond. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.